Hi, I'm Natalie Callback, and I'm here with Callan Duby for Creative Jumpstart 2019. I'm super excited that Callan is back with us. She did an amazing video for 2018. And if you don't know Caroline, it's about time to get to know her and let her tell you who she is, what she does, where she's coming from. <laughs> Hi, Caroline. Hello, I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> Um, so a little bit about me is I don't like rules. I don't like being told what to do. I don't like shoulds. I don't like musts. And I really like color. <laughs> really <you> like color. <laughs> <laughs> I would have figured when looking at your uh, shirt or in the background, it looks also plain and black and white. <laughs> I'm a very neutral kind of person. <laughs> monochromatic uh -huh, with the rainbow yeah <laughs> but for me for me artist is play it's um I was wound really tightly for a lot of years <laughs> and I was really um it wasn't really me and so through play I found like wow this feels so much nicer I'm, I'm a better human being <laughs> and so I just kept doing more and more of that so for me creating is freedom mm -hmm. it's just it's no must, no shoulds, no rules, no have tos. It's just freedom. In, in no other way that I can get I can get that feeling short of skydiving, and that just wouldn't be good. So for me, it's art and play. So what is your m main like substrate you work on or projects you work with? Are you painting? Are you? I mean, I know, but I'm asking you <laughs> to tell. <laughs> you, you ask me, I'm like, well, it's kind of whatever's within arm's reach. So I will. Um, you might call it shiny object syndrome or practicality because it's if I've got cardboard around I love to work on cardboard um, It might be canvases. It might be wood. It might be an art journal. It might be junk mail It might be the wall in my house it's like it just Whatever's around and I feel like doing I'll go with and the more I do this the less I filter <laughs> <laughs> so some things turn out really, how shall we say, interestingly, and some things I'm like, yeah, that's a bullseye, but some of them, they, they need a little more work. <laughs> so, um, so this year's theme, Creative Jumpstart, is My Home is My Castle, and um, as some of you might know already from the other interviews, uh, I give my artists the my artists they're all my artists. <laughs> I give them the theme and like a little bit of an explanation what that could entitle, but then basically you guys are totally free to do whatever you want to do with the theme, and then we will see. So, um, what I would love to know, Carolyn, what does home mean to you? Sanctuary. It, it is it is the place that rejuvenates, replenishes. It's, it's sanctuary from the world, from all of the things that being grown There are some musts and shoulds when you're grown up, and home is that place that you can relax in, like really relax in, and that it's a, like things are around you that pick you up, that lift you up, as opposed to, well, what's out there in the world. It doesn't always do that. That sounds awesome. I like that a lot, sanctuary. That's so true, right? It is so true. So now let's dig a little bit deeper as the queen of everything that's colorful. Um, so, I, and you mentioned that already a little bit that you, um, that no wall is safe from you. So how does, um, so how does like the colorfulness show up in your room and what sort of colorful pieces did you create in your home? Well, um, so one of them is that right behind me, if you can see that. Um, that was a tree from a storm, a big branch that fell down, and I fell in love with it, to which my husband's like, all right, we're bringing the tree inside. <laughs> you know, because of course, you know, you spray paint it. Of course, everybody makes it, you know, spray paints the tree limb. We, mount, we put it in concrete, so it's this big tree, and, and so I keep putting more stuff on it, and, and so it's becoming very much a memory tree. Um, so there's some garlands on there that were from when my kids did my Christmas gift and oddballs of this and that. It just keeps getting added on there. So over the years, just more crud and colorful stuff just gets added to it. Um, and, and it is really kind of one of those nuisance things because it can't leave the room. <laughs> it can't really, it's really hard to move out the door. So it, it's kind of staying here. Um, so I'll do stuff like that. Um, I did a floor cloth 
Um, I took it outside with a big broom and just hit with paint and spray paint and because I needed something to protect the floor. So, um, yeah, no, nothing's really safe here. The, the neighbors are really actually kind of lucky because I, as much as I want to let go with everything, I'm not completely over the edge. Um, I was at a graffiti park recently in Austin and I was just in love with this. Like, Oh, it was just, and I, so I would so love to do the outside of my house in that. I would just love to spray a bucket truck and just spray paint the entire outside. And I know that really will, that's not going to fly <laughs> in our neighborhood and it's vinyl siding. So that's a whole separate thing. But so, I mean, I do have some restraint, but I'd like to push that line as much as I can when I'm at home because it's my house I right. with it. I love that. I know also um, when we were talking a little bit beforehand uh, in the interview, and I know that before we talked about it before, we both like to bicycle. And I think, if I recall right, I've seen you once a couple of years ago that you actually also uh, stenciled and spray painted your bike, right? Yes. Yes. So in the neighborhood, are you known as the colorful lady? <laughs> well, in some ways, it's somewhat hidden and some ways not. So like I've got a wall outside my studio that's cement, um, kind of like hold back the hill or something technical like that. And so I'll spray paint that. I will just go to town on that. But you can't really see it from the street. <laughs> so just a few choice neighbors know what's kind of exploding around here. Um, so it's not because it's a very conservative, quiet little town. And so I just kind of I just kind of lay low. I, I, I guess I'm, I might be seen as somewhat of a character, I guess, to <laughs> I go around because it's, you know, I mean, like, why not put some color on it? I mean, I, I haven't done the dog in a while, so that's good. <laughs> it's been safe. I remember a couple of years ago when we were still living in Germany, um, like probably 10 years ago, whatever. We had a roof terrace and I bought spray oh, paints oh. like for the first time like many years ago and I was upstairs and I was, sh you know, shaking the, the spray paint bottles and it was still like, you know, kind of like graffiti was still like not even like nowadays I feel like it's more like people people enjoy it more and it's actually becoming more mainstream but back then that was like you know crime so i was like upstairs upstairs on the roof terrace and i was like actually spray painting um and stenciling a planter and people could look from other apartments like through the window some of them could look over and i and i guess it was like very loud you know like just shaking the thing. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, people are looking. I hope no one's going to call the police on me. <laughs> well, if you're going to get arrested for something, at least make it fun. <laughs> I know. It's like, and it's really like, hey, this is actually my terrace. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> but it was funny. I guess I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I know. So, um, okay, so the tree is pretty colorful. Is that the most colorful thing in your home? <laughs> Me, no. <laughs> well, I'll do things like there was there was one bathroom. I'm like, we need a little color in here, so we painted it lime green. And wow, whoa. <laughs> so in that bathroom, I'm like, yeah. Um, I did... Um, I did a 40 by 80 uh, piece of something for over the sofa. Um, I yeah, just anything sort of fair game. It's um, I took uh, the for some reason I really seem to be doing a lot with the bathrooms lately. Um, but I put chalkboard, blue chalkboard paint all over the walls. So now you, it's basically a big writing space because when you close the door, nothing distracts you. Yeah, like it's clean space. <laughs> Which, you know, my husband has tried to convince me of for years, calling it the reading room. But um, And so there's just big chalkboard in there now. So anybody can write or I can go in there and think and just you're all by yourself. So That's I'm starting more and more stuff like that around the house. Just practical use for space. Do you like um, like redoing the house or is that important for you? Like um, redecorating or repainting? I love how it looks when it's done. <laughs> You don't like the process? 
not unless it's fun painting. No, but yeah. just actually painting walls. That's what my husband and children are for. Like that's, um, and, and they're, they're just, they're like, he says, give me the can of paint. I'll go do it. Um, like the, the basement, uh, the studio bathroom, that one I gel printed on the wall. So if I do that, it's fun and I'm all good. Like, and I've scribbled all over. That's just kind of a, imagine the walls, like a big art journal page. Yeah. So whatever I have in hand, and it's big, and, and you, you know how it feels different to work big versus yeah, small. Yeah. Sometimes I just like to have that whole body. You just kind of really get into it. Um, and so I have a space for that. So we'll see what the next homeowner feels like when they buy the place. Let me go back on that because that's so interesting. You said you gel printed your wall. Yeah. Is that like you put paper that you gel printed on there, or did you actually – Okay, I want to know more. Please tell us. <laughs> so it's it's the exact same thing, like where you know, like when you have paint all over your gel plate, and you normally say flip it over onto something, you just put it on the wall instead. <laughs> I used house paint because I, I, I was like, all right, let's see. This. And by the way, house paint eh, on gel, like uh, for the walls, it was good, but I don't. It actually does feel different, yeah. and I don't really like it um, for general mixed media. Yeah. And it doesn't, color doesn't mix very well with it either. <laughs> uh, like when they mix it, it's beautiful, but you do not mix your colors. Yeah. Red and blue did not make purple, FYI. <laughs> and, uh, but you, know, you just load it up and you just stick it on that wall and just slap it up. And it, it just makes the best slapping sound when you just start whack it right up there. And, and I'm kind of short and, you know, it's not always safe to put me on a ladder with my sons of balance at times. So I'll just kind of reach for it. So you kind of have to like, you know, send it up there. So it, it's kind of like watching that short person try and dunk, you know, <laughs> dunk. I'm getting the, the gel plate up there. And, and in the bathroom, you can actually see the line where is as far as I can reach. Like that's where <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's as far as I can <laughs> So yeah, but it, it is, oh, it is so free. Oh, it felt so good. I could just hear my mother in my head from when I was a kid and you couldn't put posters on the wall because you were going to yeah. mess up the wall for the house. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I'm so messing up the wall. <laughs> that must have been so freeing. That sounds like so much fun. It was a rush. I mean, it was just such a rush. I'm like, yeah. And, and I will say that, like, the, the the bathroom has these tiles along the bottom half of it. And this house was a do-it-yourself for house before we bought it. So this was not a good tile job. Like, this is not going to cut it. And I'm like, well, all righty then. Here we go. Let's paint <laughs> over it. Let's just see what happens. And so everything is fair game in that bathroom and I'm just like yeah. it, it's just I just because again no must no shoulds no rules yeah. I love it's, that and it's also your studio bathroom so I mean it's your whatever you want to do right I mean it's your studio yep I own the house I'm like, exactly <laughs> like I can hear this chorus of relatives through the years going do you know what that's going to do for the value of your home do you know how hard this is going to be to sell it and it is just so much fun to give them the raspberries. I mean, I just absolutely stick my tongue out and go, na 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 na. I just right. did it. <laughs> I think it's so interesting. Uh, we are we were actually looking at some open houses, my husband and I, um, lately, and so um, it was interesting to me because most of the times, even if people redid uh, their bathroom or their kitchen for the value of the house, you looked at it and you were like, I would actually, I I actually almost hoped you wouldn't have done that because it's still not my taste and I would rather buy it for less money and then just do it myself do you know what I mean like I think it's like such a it's such a taste thing of how things are so I rather have someone have a like a painted thing and I'm like you know if I don't like it then I'm like I just rip it out and do my own thing and you know I, I don't I don't know it's just like such a weird like I get it in a way, but also I'm like, sometimes just don't do anything is also okay, you know? Because <laughs> there's such great freedom in something that sucks. Yeah. You know, no, I mean, I don't say it sucks. I'm just saying if that's well, not your taste, right, then... But, but like, like if it's... Um, we, we redid, when we redid the bathroom, like yeah. we, we had to get a new fa sink and faucet because they, they, they were not good. Like they were dilapidating. Yeah. <laughs> it was like time. So they, they sucked. And um, the cabinet was banged up because, you know, after 25 years, like, duh. Right. 
And the fact that it was just, it stunk. You know, it was, I love it when things are horrible because there's such freedom in that. Yeah, exactly. Who, who cares? Like, there's no, it's like when it's like half good, then, then I'm in trouble. Because I'm like, right. I kind of like this, but I don't love it. Well, uh -uh. it's the same analogy uh, fits to anything that you do in class or in your own artwork, right? It's like, I love, I actually love it when um, students have early on, they, they look at something and they're like, oh my God, this is the most horrible background that I have. And I'm like, yeah, good. Because now I can actually get you to just continue without thinking you're going to save this like part of it that looks like beautiful and awesome. <clears throat> because what's the purpose of a background? It's called background. It's not called foreground that you do like, or finishing touch that you do first. That's not how it works, right? So I, I actually love it when it when you know that happens. And I would say ninety nine point nine percent of the times, just because they get freer in and and it's the same for myself too. You get freer and you're like, it doesn't matter if I screwed up. It's screwed up already, right? And then you do it and you do things that you might have not done anymore. You're like doesn't matter and then most of the times that's the the favorite piece or or journal page right so i love that it, it's like a difficult child yeah and you have to go through all these journeys with it and in the end you have this incredible relationship just because of all you've been through and the, the stuff that starts out ugly just so i agree so often becomes a favorite right speaking of so often becomes a favorite or something happens in between um, so, Carolyn is known for her phrase, which is, I think, let me say, oh, you say it, it's like uh, your oops philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about your oops philosophy and tell us when was the last time you yelled oops? Well, oops came about when I was wound really tight and um, I always heard that thing like, oh, those mistakes are just opportunities. <laughs> and, and anytime somebody would say that to me, I, I was feeling violent. You know, the, the urge to hit them would, would kind of, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, there was none of this, like, see the opportunity. I was too wrapped up in the mistake, you know. And, and of course, these were all like, you know, life altering things like a piece of paper. And, and so I, I had to find a way to just not take this so dang seriously. I mean, it's paint, it's paper. Right. I had so much paint and paper and I'd make one mistake and I'm like, you know, and it was a mistake in my head, not a mistake that, you know, the world, it was me. Right. And so I, to laugh at myself, I'm like, okay, I need to say oops. And I, it's, so it's outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. <laughs> and what I found is when I, when I get, make that mistake and I normally go into expletives and things that when you wouldn't repeat online <laughs> in a place like this, instead I started saying oops. And I couldn't say it with an angry tone. Like, I couldn't go, oops, and, and take myself, like, it's ridiculous. And that, that knocks me out of that, taking it way too seriously. And so I, to me, it's those mistakes were, they really are gifts. I mean, I, I get it. It's, that exists for a reason. Those things are opportunities. But the trick is, how do you start to see them as an opportunity? How do you actually get from, <laughs> to the, all right, this went horribly south. Okay. <laughs> so and, what? <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and so that's, and that's really saying oops. And, and it, it's taking me a while to get to the point where it's like, yeah, oops. Like it's very casual now. Right. Like, so but you know, and I had to really go like, oops, oops. And, and now it's just a part of my DNA. And, and so it's funny that you mentioned, when did I say it last? Cause it wasn't that long ago, <laughs> but I said it pretty, pretty vehemently. Um, that, uh, what I do in my art, uh, you may know this, that what we do creatively the things that we practice, we get more comfortable with, spills out into the rest of our lives. Right, and it has done that for me, and it's it's actually becoming extremely helpful in non-art things. Mm -hmm. When I mailed the mortgage and didn't put the address of the bank on it, turns out when you put the check in the mail, you need to include the address for where it's going. Like they <laughs> just don't deliver it if it's blank. Thankfully, I put the return address, but it, you know, it comes back to me. I've got the late fee, and I'm just like, and I was just mortified as an adult that I have a paid mortgage <gasps> and then I'm like okay oops just figure it out right take it and then what are you going to make sure you don't do this again because I was I was paying the bills too tired it was late things were chaotic like yeah take it to, so I could see the opportunity yeah really I just felt about like this tall <laughs> like 
<laughs> 20 years, I've never missed a payment. Oh my God. You know, it's just that. Right. And it's that kind of thing. So, so I'm noticing it spill out more places. Um, when I, when it happens in my art, I actually really welcome it. If it doesn't happen, I kind of miss it. Yeah. Cause it's adventure. Yeah. It's, it, it, I don't know what's, if I always know what's coming, it's kind of predictable and it takes the, the rush out of it. But when, when you don't know, it's like, yeah. So I, I really love it when the oopsies happen now. That's so fun. I love that too. I also think that, um, it's problem solving and mm -hmm. and that's what you do when you do art you're you're when and things are not working the way or you're not used to something or you you know figuring out something you're figuring out things and it's like problem solving or maybe problem is the wrong word but you're trying to find a way and i love that you have this outlet where you don't have to be perfect because it's your it's something it shouldn't be you know so i i never I always say like we have so many parts in our life that we are uh, trying to be so perfect or we have to be so perfect and um, why would you want to do that to yourself in your art like there's no there's no reason like don't do it <laughs> like, go with well, you, the flow you bring up, yeah you bring up perfect and it last time i was at uh, moma the museum of modern art in mm -hmm. new york i mean i'm right up there looking right, i mean i'm right up looking at the the painting it was a picasso i think And at the point where the security guard was kind of like, lady, step back. And But I had my hands down because I really would have touched. But if you really look at those really closely, you see all of their imperfections. Yeah, and yeah. lines, that, like you're like, you missed that mark. And yet it doesn't detract yeah. from it in any way. It, it actually makes it more. Um, and so perfection is just, it's not really there. Yeah. It, When you look at what the masters have done, the ones that were just so prolific and incredible, their stuff has that. Or when you look at Frida Kahlo's, I'm like, wow, her stuff up close, the layers and the imperfections, that's what makes it. Well, um, it's kind of like what we find um, beautiful, too, in human beings, right? I mean, they have tried to Photoshop the the perfect human being where everything is like symmetric, right? And it's like, it's not appealing. When they showed it to people, we're like... That's not appealing. Like these little imperfections, which is kind of the wrong word, but that makes people, like we feel that these people are, like that's beautiful. And if it's like this perfect or whatever someone thinks that might be perfect, you're like, yeah, that's boring. Mm -hmm. It's just boring. Mm -hmm. Right? And and I love, I love seeing these. Uh, and also, I forgot what's the, what the name for it is. I should know. I just read it, but my brain is not the best anymore. You know, you're getting there. But but there is this, and I'm sure one of our uh, viewers knows, or maybe you know, uh, there's this like um, uh, Japanese philosophy and pottery and everything is that something breaks or something doesn't really work. They put some gold on top of it to kind of like make that mistake stand out. I think that's such an amazing and beautiful uh, uh, way because, and, and, and it looks gorgeous. Like you have these like, like a broken plate and then they put it back together and they um, emphasize that, that, you know, like line that was broken by putting some gold on, on there. And I think that's such an amazing, that's such an amazing philosophy. Like you kind of like embrace and like, even like, push that mistake, this imperfection out and make that part of the whole thing and let it shine. I think that's so cool. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And you know, we, so many ways you've been trained to hide those imperfections. Right. But really they're the thing. Yeah. I, I totally agree. They're the thing that make it cool. Yeah. Speaking. So, um, that was pretty cool. I had a great time as always with Caroline. Caroline, This video is going to air, um, I have to say that because you guys, you can see we're still in summertime, kind of. Um, so this is going to be out uh, at the end of November, December. Um, so thinking that the, your people are, are knowing now, <laughs> is there anything that's coming up you want to tell them to join classes, products, anything? Um... Wow, so you want me to see into the future? Yeah. Okay, so time <laughs> travel. Um, <laughs> well, there'll be play, there'll be fun, and I don't know exactly which one it'll be, so check out my newsletter at acolorfuljourney.com. Um, I do have a free workshop called Permission to Play. It's going to shock you after this, right, that I, I'm all about the play. Um, 
But whatever it is, there won't be a lot of rules. And if there are, you don't even have to follow them. And it's just color and play. So check it all out at a colorfuljourney.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Caroline. We can't wait to see your wonderful video for Creative Jumpstart 2019. Sign up through Caroline's link. And yeah, see you soon. Bye. Thank you.